Welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. Libraries Turn the Page podcast. I am Jessica, your host today, and welcome to Lauren Claudere, uh, author of Cover Stories. And I want to thank you so much for sharing this book with us because it was definitely a thrill ride and really very interesting. So please just tell us a little bit about this book and how it came to be. Sure. Well, thanks so much for having me. Cover Stories is a novel written about an aspiring journalist, or I guess I would say an ambitious journalist who is working at a 24-hour cable news network. She finds herself in a relationship with someone that she does not at the time know is undercover with an elite unit of the CIA. The relationship kicks off very strong. They're drawn to each other immediately. And before she really realizes what is happening, our character, who's the lead character, is named Annabelle. She finds herself in what has become quite an emotionally abusive situation, and and she can't really claw her way out of it. The story is based on my own experience. It is obviously a heavily fictionalized novel, but it is based on my own experience working in a newsroom in both Washington and New York and the relationship that I was in at that time. So it's interesting in general. So Ryan is her romantic interest. Annabelle, she really wants to be taken seriously as a journalist. And she sort of finds herself as almost like an accessory in the newsroom to a lot of the men um, in the situation. And, you know, she's really, really working hard for just a piece of that respect. And it seems that it doesn't come 100% easily. And she seems to think that, you know, when she meets Ryan, like you said, it was almost like sparks immediately. And, you know, everybody wants a relationship where someone's going to build them up. Uh, And it almost seems like Ryan's going to be that person in the beginning. But then you also get Ryan's perspective. And obviously, what he sees is very different from what Annabelle sees. And then there's the piece that he is an operative for undercover for the CIA. In general, it was a really interesting read because a lot of it was you're reading just how good Ryan is at lying, but that's kind of his job. And I really felt for Annabelle while she was going through all of this, she was really like there were times where she really felt that Ryan was going to share her triumph with her. And he just, he expertly turned things around. And it just made me wonder, I mean, you know, can you actually have a relationship with somebody who is in that line of work and who would be necessarily in that line of work? So, I mean, I don't know if you want to um, talk a little bit about just building uh, Annabelle's character versus Ryan, because it's told in both of their points of views. Right. Um, It's told from from both their perspectives. I felt like that was important to have his point of view in the story, just because, yes, he, he is an expert at what he does, and he knows what he's doing. And, you know, the hard thing is that she doesn't. And I'm glad you said that you, you felt for her, because, I mean, I think that's should come across as, you know, her struggles and her and her challenge. And I think the hard thing for her is that she doesn't realize it when it's happening, really, right? Like, there are moments where she kind of understands, like, hey, this doesn't feel right, or this doesn't seem quite right. But at the same time, she is sort of lured in by him and very attracted to him. And he has a very charming way about him, where he makes her feel, in some cases, like you said, really wonderful and perfect and successful. But does he really need that? And, you know, and, and even having written this myself, I, I don't, he is the character that I created, but I don't know if he means that, right? It's because he's so good at what he does that he's very much focused on getting what he wants, I think, at the end of the day. And I think what's also interesting is that she, in spite of herself and of her goals and of her ambitions, 
is sort of willing in, in some ways to kind of give into that a little bit. And it's not until it, it becomes clearer down the road where she realizes that that might have been a, a very big mistake. So to answer your question, I don't know that it is possible to have, you know, a, a functional relationship with someone like that. I'm sure there are people in the world who do. I mean, there are definitely undercover officers who have wives and families and, and children. I don't know how they do that, you know, and then good for them for making it work. But in, in this particular book situation, it's, it's definitely a challenge. Another thing that comes across, and to your point, is... There is obviously a gamut of what people can make work. And I think the root of their personality has a lot to do with that. And Ryan himself, just he seems more than happy to take on the role that is needed. Uh, and obviously that's part of his work, but more than happy, you know, like it's one thing, obviously, if you're manipulating somebody for that particular situation, but like someone who wants to be in a relationship with you he did it so easily. And yeah, Annabelle, she is ambitious. There is a very strong line between being ambitious and just being selfish. Mm -hmm. Being ambitious because you did work really hard. You're, you know, you want to do the best by how hard you work. You want to show the work that you did and be able to be taken seriously. And for him, he's not going to face those challenges. And it's really just seems to be about control almost for him. And that came through extremely strong. It's not a thing that I want to talk too much about because I really do want people to read the book and sort of just kind of catch up on some of the things. But there were things that happened that he says to Annabelle and he accuses her of that I found myself trying to flip back pages. I was like, wait, did that happen? So he wasn't just basically gaslighting her. He was gaslighting me as a reader. Because, oh, wow. yeah, I I was wondering. I was like, wait a second. that I don't remember it that way. So he, he was really put in her shoes. Oh, that's funny. Um, it, well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what he does, right? And, and I'm, I'm glad it came across as I guess that realistic because yeah having lived through a similar experience like that is often how you feel like wait did that happen <laughs> did I do I remember that that way did did I miss like an entire conversation at some point and actually like when I was in this situation and kind of what sort of inspired this is in my own moments of sort of hey am I really losing my mind? I, I would just start kind of like writing things down, writing it down and remembering. So I, so I could look back and say, okay, no, this is what happened in that conversation. And when I started seriously thinking about, you know, potentially novelizing it, I'm glad I had that kind of record of that confusion and that feeling because it, it is like, you start to feel like you're losing your mind a little bit. Right. And that's really where Annabelle was struggling. So I do know uh, you've written under Lauren Claudaire, and that is your name as an author, but you do have some experience in working, as you mentioned earlier, in D.C. and New York in a newsroom setting. How did that inform your writing as a whole? Well, I think oh, I was initially drawn to journalism in the first place is because I've always loved writing and I've loved stories and storytelling. And it felt like what better stories are there to tell than kind of, you know, having a front row seat to history as it's being made, as they say, right? In journalism, like that's, that's what it is. You're kind of the first draft, right? And so I think that's what drew me to journalism to begin with. And yes, I, I spent almost a decade working as um, a producer in these in these live newsrooms and these live news environments and you know you're covering breaking news all the time and it's you know incredibly fast paced and you have to be able to like write quickly and write you know make sense of a lot of stuff at once and so I found that my love of writing and kind of telling stories is really what brought me there but when I was done with that part of my career I actually stepped away again after about almost 10 years working in, in that field and then it was kind of looking back where I was like, wow, a lot of crazy stuff happened there. I wonder like if I should revisit some of that in kind of a fictionalized setting. And I also felt like the journalism experience, 
it does kind of lend itself at least in my opinion obviously to you know interesting stories just because you are covering interesting stories but you're also meeting interesting people and it's kind of a pressure cooker environment there's a lot of stress there's a lot of anxiety there's a ton of egos so it all kind of makes for an interesting kind of backdrop in which to tell this story in particular I felt. So what are some thrillers that you really enjoy? I mean, I have to say, like, one of my favorites, uh, which this book reminded me a bit of, was Tell Me Lies by Carola Lovering, which I know for her, it was based on a lot of variants that she had herself. But I think there's so much emotion, like, this was almost like, not just a thriller in general, this was almost an emotional thriller. Uh, because as I mentioned before, you really do feel for Annabelle and her situation. It really came through. Are you generally a thriller reader yourself? I'm actually surprised <laughs> that I ended up writing something that skews more towards the thriller because generally I do like some thrillers, but I also have like a, you know, I like lighter things as well. I think I would actually probably gravitate towards more lighter things. I'm a huge fan of Tana French and her sort of crime, you know, the Dublin Murder Squad series. I love those. I would read those all day long. But I also like a lot of lighter things like Leon Moriarty and, and authors like that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm always kind of, I don't necessarily consider myself, you know, a thriller junkie or like a uh, someone who only will gravitate towards those, but um, I guess I could say that my likes are pretty varied. Well, I really do think that this book has an audience. It was a really good read. I also wanted to talk a little bit about the characters that are around both Annabelle and Ryan. You have Charlie, who is Annabelle's really good friend, and you have Alex, who is sort of the one who inadvertently connects the two of them, Alex brings Ryan out to a bar, basically a, a club, uh, where he meets Sanibel, and he was in a really weird, tough position as well, because he was more aware of the situation as it was unfolding than Annabelle was allowed to be. Right. Yeah. How did you approach writing um, those side characters as sort of the ones who were watching this collision course happen? I felt like it was important to have people on the outside because one thing that I found, again, from my own experience, is that it's very difficult to see this happening when you're in it, as strange as that sounds to say, like, because there's lots of ways that you can kind of rationalize certain behavior and especially with the job component, like his job component, that was a big thing for her. She kept saying, oh, he's doing this because of his job and he's doing this because of his job, but I can't tell anyone about his job because that's just, I'm not supposed to know about that, that's a secret. So it becomes like very hard to be in that situation yet people on the outside can so clearly look and be like, what are you doing? <laughs> like this, this, is, this seems kind of crazy, right? And so I felt that it was important to have people on the outside who could kind of lend that perspective the Alex character is actually, I will say, the one that's most true to life. He's obviously completely, you know, made up, obviously, and he's, like, he's not the same person, clearly, doesn't have the same job or anything like that, but um, he's the most emotionally true, because I did have that person in my life when, when this was happening to me, and, you know, one of the lines that's in the book is something that I think the only thing that is actually quite true in the fictionalized version, which is when he realized, like, how serious things that we're getting he's the one that pulled me aside and was like you've got to get out because this is only going to end badly if you stay and of course I was like we're in love <laughs> like you know really had kind of an immature reaction to that but I thought it was important to have those side perspectives and I kind of wrote the Alex character was easier to kind of develop just because I had similar conversations with someone that I actually knew and the Charlie character, she was just someone who I felt like needed to be a like a very loyal friend for better or for worse. And I, I hope that she comes across that way in the story because she is worried about her friend, but she's also confused too because she doesn't understand, she doesn't know the extent of what Annabelle is is going through either. But she's trying to be supportive, which is hard. Are you uh, going to continue your writing journey from here? 
because this was a very good debut. Thank you so much for saying that. You know, I love writing. I'd love to continue. You know, I actually, until recently, had an entirely separate career working in sales, actually, in software, in software sales. So um, until recently, I haven't had much time at all to really devote to writing in the way that I wanted to. And I haven't had a chance really to give this book as much attention as I felt like it deserved. And so that's kind of what my focus is on for the next couple of months, I would say. And then I do have some ideas, some things that I'm always thinking of different story ideas and different storylines. So hopefully I will be able to continue. We'll, we'll see how, how things go with this one. Awesome. Thank you so much for chatting with us. Check out Cover Stories by Lauren Claudere. You can grab it on Amazon at the moment. That's right. And really, I do think this is a thriller with very wide appeal, um, whether or not it is fictionalized or um, true to life. It has some really good emotion. And like I said, it's just so well written that you'll kind of find yourself questioning whether or not you remember what happened as well. So uh, it's just great. Uh, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. So this was Jessica with Syosset Library's Turn the Page podcast, and we are going to close this chapter. It's time to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Join us for the next episode.